I just got through making this bed. It's begging for bed wood now. So today I'm here at Brothers Tech Center to show you how to uh, trial fit your bed, prep it, different options you have on staining and finishing. So you make sure you stay tuned because you need this. Technically speaking, you could just stain this and varnish it and uh, paint it and go ahead and put it in, but there's a few little problems with that. When you're trying to drill these holes out, you could scratch your bed sides, you could punch out the wood on the bottom, a few other things that I don't like. So this is the way that I like to do it because it's going to have your bed wood last as long as possible. Now one thing that you don't have with this bed wood is it doesn't have the holes drilled out here. And the reason for that is because um, your truck might have had an accident. This uh, uh, here might be bowed in or out, miscellaneous things like that. So if they were to drill the holes, you'd be locked into that. You have to make sure that your bed wood is uh, placed in, make sure it's all square and everything, and then you can mark these holes and take it back out. When you take it back out and drill the holes, you'll be able to do it a little bit easier and softer, and you don't have to worry about punching the wood out on the back when the drill bit breaks through, making a big old gouge on there. I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to put our pieces here in the corner and this right here on the side because if you were to start in the center you wouldn't be able to get these guys in. So we'll get these first and then I'll work my way to the center. So you can see the bolt holes right here in the sill where the uh, strips are going to bolt down. And all you got to do is just put your boards and in between those holes right there. And if you're installing your wood and you see this uneven gap here on the bottom, that means that your bed is not squared. It's a little bit jacked to one side or something. How we're going to even that out is we get a tape measure and we simply put it in one corner and measure to the other. In this case here, it looks like about 102 inches. Over here, I've got 105. So that's a little long. This is a little short. That means I got to bring this side back a little bit. Now let's say you're doing this and um, you move it and it doesn't go into the right spot. No big deal. Just go the opposite direction. Try different things until it does fit evenly. If it doesn't work one way, it'll work the other way. Now what I'll do is I'll double check. I've got a hundred and uh, three inches here. I've got a hundred and three inches there. And now you can see that when my bed wood is in here that these lines are nice and straight right here. So we know we've got our bed nice and straight. Now a lot of times when you're working on this you might jostle it around or whatever so I recommend to double check and make sure that it's square several times throughout your process so you've got it perfect. So I'm using a Phillips head screwdriver and the front bed panel, the holes that are in the front bed panel, and I'm just lining up everything here. Then I'll do the same thing in the back. And then I'll go ahead and start installing my strips. Now the strips can gouge your wood, so you have to be really careful. Another thing that you got to watch out for is you'll notice on this end you've got two holes right here, but on this end you only have one hole. So you know that the two holes go to the front, the one hole goes to the back. You don't want to take it and just kind of lean it over this and then try to set it in because it's a good chance you'll scratch your wood. You want to set it in the groove and then go ahead and slide it forward. So just like that, I'll go ahead and take the bolt and put it right in there and then uh, I'll do the same thing for the front. Now the sills that you got underneath right here, they might be off a little bit. So once I get these secured just a little bit in the front and the back, then I'll be able to use my uh, screwdriver here and I'll be able to position my um, sill plate into the position better. So 
So I'm going to snug up the bolts in the front and the back just enough to where I can still move it around but it's not too shaky. And I'm going to use a spatula like this. I'm going to start in the center and I'm going to make sure that if this is off I can use this and get it exactly where I want it. I also want to make sure that this gap between the bed strip and the wood is even all the way across and all the way up. I see a ton of times where it's got a um, ton of gap on one side and nothing on the other or it's uneven. The straighter it is, the better it's going to look. Now the reason we're going to all this trouble right now is that we have to make sure that when we mark these holes that all the boards are in their exact spot. So I'm setting this up basically like I would be installing it for the last time. Perfectly straight so that my holes are perfectly in the right spot. When I'm marking my holes, I'm going to use a pencil, not a magic marker, because sometimes you'll do this and you'll pull the board out and you'll see the holes are like way off or something. Maybe your bed's not right or whatever. So if you use the magic marker, you could put a permanent stain on it. Of course, pencil to just wipe right off. Now I'm going to spend just a little bit more time on this, getting it just a little bit more perfect. I'll mark my holes and then I'll show you how to drill them out without doing any damage to the wood. Now, I don't have to pull out all of my wood in order to get my inside pieces here out. I just need to take off a couple of boards. your boards out take a look at your holes and how they're lined up if they seem off and odd and even uneven or something like that you more than likely got something wrong and you're gonna have to double check to make sure you're square and get it back in and double check all of your um, items to be sure you're okay that's looking good there let's take this one out and we can see that our holes here are even with this edge so if it was at an angle like that, then you'd know that more than likely this was off and so was everything else. So fix it first, get your holes exactly where you need them, then you drill. Now here's how I like to drill out the bedwood holes. I like to use one of these step drills here instead of something like this. The reason being is that when I drill through with this, I can get through all the way and I can have a little pilot hole, if you will, on the opposite end. Then I can flip the board over and then drill out. And then I'll flip the board over again and drill this out the rest of the way. Now the reason that we're doing that is that if I was to use a drill bit like this, which you can, um, but if you were to have it hanging over with nothing underneath, when this is drilling through, when it punches out the back end, it might just take your wood and break it out like that. So it's unattractive and um, I don't like it. So if you're going to be using a drill like this, you don't have one, make sure that you've got a piece of wood underneath it so that when you're drilling, it won't punch out like that. It still might happen, but um, that's the best thing you're going to be able to do if you don't have one of these that are easy to find anyway. Now I'm going to drill all of my holes and um, we'll see what comes next. I've got all my holes drilled. I put it back in just so I could double check it because that's the way I do things and you should too. Now I'm actually going to take all this back out again and now I'm going to show you how to prep it and paint it with a lot of different options. So stay tuned. So I've got a couple of different pieces of wood here to show you um, how they'll look under different stains. But before we get with stains or anything like that, we've got to prep our wood. Now. Um, Oil is not a friend of varnish or top coat or stains. So we got to make sure we keep this clean. If you get oily hands and you get them on here, you can get fingerprints on there where the stain won't um, stick to or your top coat won't stick to in the future. 
You may not notice it at first, but six months later, a year later, you probably will. So in this case, I'm going to be using gloves where I rarely do. Now, on really sharp angles, hard 90 degree angles, paint is not going to want to stick to that. If you see a lot of the car shows, the bedwoods, right on the edge right here is where the paint starts to flake and peel off, and that's because it's got a hard harsh edge. We're going to round that down a little bit and the paint will stick to it a lot easier. What we're going to be using for that is uh, some 120 grit and we're going to be working the edges on the top and on the bottom because we're going to want the paint to stick on the bottom just as well as we do on the top because the bottom is exposed to all of the road elements also and um, what we're doing when we're, we're sealing and top coating our wood is if you didn't do anything at all to the wood, then two things might happen. It's either going to dry out and it's going to crack or it's going to soak up all of the water. Boards are like sponges. They'll just soak up everything. And then what happens then is they swell up. So by sealing them, what we're doing is we're keeping them from drying out too much and from not being able to get uh, moisture and swell up and crack also. So when you're doing your uh, sanding, you always want to go with your grain. If you go across the grain, those scratches will show up. If you use a jitterbug, a DA sander, those will generally show up too. And uh, right now I'm using 120 grit. I I'm not going to use it on the face of the wood. I'm only going to be using it on my edges right here. Now, sometimes when you're doing this, you'll come up on a splinter, okay, that's coming off of the board. When you get a splinter, don't take it and just pull it to the side like that. What you're going to want to do is just take the tip of that splinter off so it doesn't catch on anything and tear off. Just take the tip and then go ahead and give it a little extra sand in that one area so that doesn't give you any problems. When you're sanding this edge, you got to make sure that you're not just doing this outside edge, but you're also getting this edge right here. You got the two edges that you're going to be working with. You're also going to make sure that you're getting your edges right here. And then on this edge, I like to make sure that that's sanded a little bit better too. If you have a, a surface that is um, porous like this, then it can give you more trouble with harboring moisture and dirt and things like that. So if it's nice and smooth, a smooth surface won't harbor any dirt or moisture. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to prep this board up on all of my edges, front and back, sides, the whole nine yards. Then I'll start on the surface. When I'm doing the surface, I'm going to be using um, 220 grit. You could go up to 320 grit too, variances of opinion, I suppose. When you're doing it though, you want to make sure that you use a block sander of some sort because if you don't, what will happen is when you're doing uh, your sanding, your fingertips will t generally kind of gives you grooves in there. So your sanding block is going to disperse that um, pressure and give you a more even sand. Now these boards come um, pretty much just ready to rock and roll. I have to do very little sanding when I'm prepping these, but I'll typically go over it just to be on the safe side. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll sand down one way and then I'll come and I'll sand the other way. This will give me a different perspective of the wood to look for any minor defects. Also, when you happen to sand one particular way, um, you won't be sanding evenly. So going both ways will give you a nice even sanding. After I get everything sanded, then I can go ahead and start thinking about my stains. I've got a lot of different choices for you, so stay tuned. I should have mentioned this before, but set yourself up a comfortable workstation. Don't get too high, don't get too low. Make sure you just get a cheap blanket like this right here because you are going to be flipping the boards over to sand the backs and you want to make sure they don't get scratched up on their nice sides here. When you're working stuff like this too, keep it to the edge and um, don't be you know, putting all eight boards out and trying to sand like this. You're going to kill your back. Just have it to the edge. Keep everything nice and comfortable. This project does take a little bit of time so you want to save your body and save your back you can make it all the way to the end 
Now let's say you're sanding on your wood and you notice that it does have some dirt, possibly some grease on there. You don't want to sand it out because it might take the dirt or grease and actually grind it in. You want to get a solvent like acetone or maybe some wax and grease remover and then go ahead and clean it off with that. Um, but you definitely have to make sure you have a clean surface or the stain's not going to stain and the clear coats is not going to stick. So now I've got to clean up all my sawdust. I'll use a vacuum with a nice bristle brush on the end, making sure that it doesn't have any dirt or grease on it. I'll uh, suck all that up, get a little bit of a um, air nozzle and get the dust out from the nooks and crannies. They also have tack cloths that are good for getting all those little dust bunnies. If you get a tack cloth, what you're going to be doing is getting it and unraveling it kind of do something like this. This has a little bit of kind of a waxy material on it. If you take this and rub it down hard, you can jam that wax in there. This is just going to be a really nice, light um, brushing that you're going to be doing. You're going to be doing it in one direction so that we're taking all the dust and just moving it to there. You can see what was left here. You'll just take this and fold it around again a little bit different. and. Just do this a couple of times so you make sure that you don't have any dust bunnies. Now I will show you um, some different stains and different ways to apply them. And then we'll go into top coat. Now what I like to do first is paint a truck before I decide what stain to go with because I want my colors to match. I want a theme to be continuous throughout my truck. Nine times out of ten, my golden oak is what I go with. It just always seems to bring out the um, nice rich color of the oak and works really well. But I've got different choices for you and I've done a lot of different things in the past. If you're going to be doing this at home and you have your bed wood and you're going to be testing different things, what you're going to want to do is is test on the bottom, put it in a place where it's not going to be visible if somebody climbs up underneath and takes a look, do your test there, and then go on after you've uh, got your perfect color. So what I'm going to do for you today is go with my golden oak, I've got a dark color, I've got blue paint, actual automotive paint, and I've got some green paint on here too. These can give you really cool effects also. So um, I'm going to go ahead and stain these in different sections on the pine and the oak so you'll be able to tell the difference on the stain, on the way it looks on both of the woods. And I'll do something on the bottom so you've got a lot of different choices and you know what's going to look like what before you even get your wood. Now let's check out the different ways we can actually apply our stains. Now since I paint cars for a living, I've got plenty of paint guns laying around. If you don't have a compressor and a paint gun, I've got some different options for you. But you can get paint guns pretty inexpensive and um, compressors aren't that bad either. The nice thing about it is that it'll generally lay out a nice even coat for you. You can use also rags and brushes but you want to make sure that you pour it into a separate container because what's going to happen is you might be left over with some and you don't want to get any contaminants into the original can. So we've got a separate uh, uh, can here. I don't really like to use rags too much because when you're doing the rags, sometimes they'll get caught in the nooks and crannies and it'll give you a little bit more dust bunnies. So either the spray gun or the paintbrush is my preference. When I'm going to be applying the stain, I'm going to make sure that I'm getting this end right here. The end is very porous. It soaks up a lot of uh, material. So I'm going to make sure that's sealed really good. And there are grooves right here where this is routered. I really need to make sure that the stain gets in those so that um, I've got nice even color. When I'm applying the stain, I need to make sure that it is nice and even. I don't have some weird blotch that's left over. After I play, apply the stain and I've let it dry up maybe five minutes or so, I'll go ahead and I will wipe it down just lightly with a rag because you don't have a choice at this point and um, pick up any extra puddles of uh, stain that I might have. So there are your different options of applying your stain. Let me get a few on here and sh let's see what they look like. Here you can get a really good look at all of our different choices. Now down here I went with no stain at all. 
Here I've got the golden oak, and you can see how it's bringing out the grain in the oak and in the pine. Now let's say, for instance, you wanted this a little bit darker. You'd want to wait 24 hours and then put another coat on. If you simply put a coat on uh, right after each other, it generally won't get darker. You've got to wait that 24 hours. Now here you can see this is ebony, and this is definitely a lot darker. If you were going with a dark colored uh, truck, this would be really a uh, nice looking grain showing up here. Here I um, took some blue metallic, light blue metallic paint, and I thinned it out a lot with a lot of reducer. And then I just lightly shot it on here. And you can see this really brings out the grain nice too. On the green, I went with the paint thicker. I did not thin it out. I actually shot it on just like I would be painting a car. But at the top half right here, I went ahead and sanded it down. And what happens is that on um, oak at least, it has really deep grains. And what will happen is the paint will get stuck down in those deep grains. The pine is a bit more even. It doesn't do it as much, but you can try different effects with it too. So now I'm going to go ahead and shoot a clear coat on that so you can see how that looks looks. When I'm going to do something like that, I'm going to go ahead and inspect the boards again. I'm going to make sure that I get my dust bunnies off by using my tack cloth and make sure everything's nice and clean. Then we can go ahead and shoot our clear coat on there. Dust bunnies are going to be the bane of your existence when you're painting, so make sure you get them all. Okay, so I've shot these with an automotive clear coat just like I would paint a truck with to show you the difference of um, what happens when you shoot the clear coat on there. Even if you don't stain it, it'll bring out the grain and give it a little bit more richness. But if you do stain it, you can see it looks even nicer. Here you got your dark colors, really brings it out. When I shot the clear coat on the uh, metal flake, it's bringing out the metal flake a little bit and making this look a little bit better. So I just wanted to show you that even after you stain the wood, when you put your top coat on, it's going to change it a little bit. So you might want to do a color test before you do your final. So now let's talk about how we're going to seal the wood. There's also a lot of different ways of doing this. They have oils that you can put on them. I don't like those because I don't want to climb underneath my truck and have to apply oil on the bottom in the future. I want to seal this once and basically be done with it. So your main choices are generally going to be um, exterior grade, not furniture or interior, exterior grade, marine finish, urethane, um, they also have this. Now, I have not used this. You see people doing um, these uh, large uh, tabletops with this kind of stuff, and you just mix it together with the hardener and you pour it on, and it's kind of this glass kind of thing. Maybe if you guys have had some experience using this um, kind of stuff, you can give us your opinion in the um, uh, comments down below but I have not used that. What I like to use is automotive um, clear coat because I'm already painting the cars with it and everything like that. I gotta be honest, I have not had a good experience using these in the past. Um, I find them to yellow and uh, chip and fade uh, before their time. Whereas the clear coat that I'm shooting on the truck and the wood is gonna be the same and they're gonna last basically the same. Now there are a few little tricks though to applying it. Since the wood is kind of like a sponge and it kind of like has a lot of air in it if you take your clear coat and you shoot it on fat what's going to happen is your air bubbles are going to get trapped in there and then they're going to slowly work their way out and they might get trapped in your clear coat or at the top and they're going to be pits and little air bubbles and stuff so how we're going to solve that problem is we're going to thin out the clear coat and what's going to happen here is imagine that this is a little air bubble right here okay so we're going to shoot a light coat on there and the little fragments are just going to land around the hole. Then we'll come back with another light coat and it'll fill it up a little bit more. Another light coat, it'll fill it up a little bit more. And if you do that, you can keep your air bubbles down to a minimum. If you still get air bubbles when it's still a little bit tacky, you can go ahead and pat them down some. You can also wait until things dry. You can sand it down and then you can just clear coat it again until you get a really um, high finish like you would on your truck, but you have to paint it and sand it several times in order to do that. 
Now let's go on to um, if you don't have a compressor, you don't have a spray gun, you don't want to go into that route, you want to go with a uh, paintbrush and a urethane finish here, then what we're going to be doing is we're going to have a separate cup so we don't cross contaminate and get anything into our can that we might be able to use in the future. When we're applying this, it is about the nooks and crannies and sealing the ends is just as important. Now I should have got a new brush and a cleaner brush, but uh, I didn't. So we're going to put some here and we're going to make sure that we've got our ends sealed really well. We're going to make sure that these grooves are covered really well. So I'll basically hit my problem areas first and then I'll come back and hit my main here. And when you're doing this, we're, uh, we don't want to have brush strokes in there. This, we want to have this nice and even. I can't like, say for instance, do something like this and have a glob. When that dries, that will dry like that and have a kind of an uneven surface for you. So we're going to be nice, even surface all the way down like that. And this here, you can also wait till it dries and then lightly sand it down, tack cloth it again, keep your dust bunnies off, and get another coat on there until you achieve that um, perfect finish that you're looking for. But it does take a while to fill up all of those grains, so be prepared for that. I'm going to let this dry up, then you'll be able to tell the difference between a urethane cover and the clear coat cover, and we'll see how much of a difference there is or not. Here you can see the um, top coats that we've chosen to use today are urethane, which is pretty common. And I've only got one uh, coat on this that I applied with a paintbrush. Uh, it, you can see it's a bit of a matted finish, even though it is a clear coat. You can get a higher gloss off of this, though, by sanding down and applying uh, more coats. Here I've only sprayed on two coats of clear coat, and you can see this is looking really good right off the bat. So this is really the way I like to do it. Again, you've got to make sure you're getting all your nooks and crannies getting your edges, getting your top and bottom, and sealing everything all the way around. Now you got, you know, eight, nine, ten boards in there, and painting all of it at one time can be a bit daunting sometimes. So um, you got a couple of different choices. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll use eyelets, and I'll screw them into uh, one end of the board, and I'll just get a wire and hang them all, and then I can paint them on both sides easy. If you don't have that much time or room, then what you're going to have to do is just one side at a time. If you're going to be doing that, what you'll do is paint the bottom side first, you wait till it dries, and then you're going to do your top. Now when you paint it that way, when I'm painting my top, I'm going to get a little bit of overspray on my bottom. That's okay though because it'll be on the bottom where nobody can see it and uh, the top's going to be nice and pretty. So you've got a lot of different options. Yeah, sometimes I'll put pearl in there. I'm giving you tons of ideas. Um, the sky's really the limit when you're doing this. You can get as creative as you want to. So if you've got some ideas that I haven't covered you think are good, make sure you put them in the comments down below so we can share them with everybody else and get everybody's truck looking good. I'm going to give this a few days to dry before I put everything back in. When I do, I'm going to have to be a little bit extra careful. I'll put tape up on the bed sides that might gouge into my uh, wood. I might even put uh, tape on my wood to make sure that nothing gets scratched up. And then I'll snug all the bolts up, snug all the bolts up, tighten all the bolts, and we'll be all set and looking pretty. My name is David Welch. I'm at Brothers Tech Center every single week making sure your truck gets back on the road and looks good too. You make sure you check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe to the YouTube channel because every time you do, a mechanic finds a tool he lost.